Have you ever wondered how durable the Hylian Shield is? How would you make the Hylian Shield? Where that is the question we're answering today. Well, first we need to determine what the Hylian Shield needs to be able to withstand. The Hylian Shield can withstand Guardian Blast and the Heat of Mount Doom. I mean, Death Mountain. It can also withstand most sword attacks. To see which is hotter, Guardian Blast or Mount Doom. Shoot, I did it again. If you equip a wooden shield in Mount Doom, Death Mountain, it will burn off. But if you get hit with a Guardian Blast with a wooden shield equipped but not used, the wooden shields won't be damaged. This shows us that Death Mountain, yes, I got it this time, is hotter. Now we need to determine which metal it might be. We need a metal that can withstand heat from the various places it goes, both blunt and sharp attacks, and general rust and croak. It needs to be light enough to carry around, as well as our metal needs to be rare, or everyone would have one. I looked into the best metals for high temperatures, resistance, and corrosion resistance. I came up with the list. Of course, there's titanium, then molybdenum, the alloy molybdenum, uranium, tungsten, niobium, columbium, and tantalum. Let's go through the qualities of each. Titanium is your standard does everything right kind of guy. It has high heat resistance and corrosion resistance. It's light and strong and even green friendly. Molybdenum is also nice. It is strong, stays stable under heat, and softer than metals like tungsten. Better than that is molybdenum uranium, an alloy that enhances the two metals. Tungsten, the highest melting point, being very heat and corrosion resistant, and has the highest tensile strength. Our next candidate is very resistant to corrosion and high temperatures, is great conductor at low temperatures, it's niobium. Yes, niobium is your standard corrosion resistant metal, with the perk of being very conductive. And finally, tantalum. This is also a great metal for our purposes, high corrosion and high and heat resistance. So, which one rules them all? Once again, we need to look at our criteria. We've covered heat and corrosion resistance. Which, by now, you're probably getting tired of me saying. We need rarity. Again, not everyone gets a Hylian Shield. And we need the Hylian Shield to be light. Or how would we run around with it? As well, we need to be able to fend off most attacks. Or it'd be the lamest shield ever. Now we start eliminating. First of all, molybdenum alloys are pretty common. And is used in many different applications. You can also rule out titanium. For some seventh most abundant material. Appearing in aerospace and marine applications. The main use of niobium is in gas pipelines and it's essential there, so the material is relatively easy to find. Tungsten and tantalum. But after all, we still haven't factored in the most important well, factor. It's essential to stay stable in the event of an attack. It's literally in the definition. So, how do we determine this? The power of a blade comes from the force, and the force can be determined in multiple ways. For this situation, we'll use the formula force equals pressure over area. In blades like knives and swords, use the pressure of the swing over a very small area, the cutting edge which is much smaller than the visible edge. This allows to the cut or separate two molecules in an efficient way to stop molecules from being separated from tensile strength. A knife will separate the butter molecules very easily because butter has a low tensile strength, but a knife cannot separate the molecules of bricks because bricks have a high tensile strength. If your shield has a low tensile strength, the only thing legendary about it will be how lame it is. Which metal is? Leave your bets in the comments below. Okay, done? The answer is tungsten! Come on up and accept your reward. As stated earlier, tungsten has the highest tensile strength of these metals. In fact, tungsten is so durable it's virtually scratch proof. Lasting its weight, we need a light shield. After all, we can't have him running around with a hook shot on his back. We need to measure the shield, so I look for something I could relate to the real world. You start looking, but that task is really hard. I tried to measure broadswords and other weapons, but guess what? The medieval Europeans uh, have an yeah. actual system for defining those different categories. They just called it whatever they like. So I came up with a new strategy. I heard if you place 10 apples on a button, the button will be pressed. Now that's very nice, but what does that have to do with the shield? I hear you asking. Well, everything in Breath of the Wild has a weight. That's how they stop things from being blown away by the wind. I tested this rumor out, of course. I put the 10 apples on button. Then I took some away. I took away a couple. Then at 7 apples, the button started to act weird. It's unstable. So I stabilized it with 8 apples. Then we find the weight. Then I substituted some apples for the Hylian shield. The average weight of an apple is 70 to 100 grams. There needs grams. to be one apple on the button with the Hylian shield. 
That means the Highland Shield is 490 grams. Well, that's not very much. At the most, that's 1.8 pounds. The lighter shields were around 5 pounds. The metal shields were 15 to 20 pounds. This is incredibly light. But when it comes to armor and shields, the lighter the better. Because that means wield it better. Now, realistically, they probably made it so you need at least two items. So most people use barrels. So we just need to procure some tungsten and weld it into the Highland Shield and we're good to go. Will you write? Tell me in the comments. If you want to find out how real Harry Potter is, it's over here. The workplace hazards of being a Jedi in real life is over here. Please subscribe for more. Share with friends or family. Leave a like and comment ideas down below.